If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. Okay, so now we are ready to bind our quilt. We have our quilt binding. Uh, I have hopefully calculated properly and I have enough. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to sew this around the outside of the quilt. Uh, most everybody will machine stitch it to the to the quilt and then a lot of people will hand bind the other side of it down. Um, I do not enjoy hand sewing so I like to do it with the machine. Usually I like to start in the middle and I need, uh, I leave about a 10 inch tail on my binding. So I'm just gonna put that in place. So I'm basically just lining up the cut edge of the binding with the cut edge of the quilt. So this quilt has already been trimmed and squared up. And I'm going to use a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna use the width of my foot. Uh, you can use a quarter of an inch. If you have a thicker quilt, you're gonna to wanna to use a smaller seam allowance here so that you have enough binding to wrap around the edge of your quilt. Um, I like to have um, a fairly wider binding. So I'm using a 3 eighths of an inch. You can use a quarter inch if you want. Um, I wouldn't go any bigger than 3 eighths of an inch. So. I am going to make sure I'm at two for my stitch length, so that's two millimeters. I like to uh, back tack a little bit there, just so it's nice and secure. And I'm just sewing along here. I don't like to pin my binding in place. I find that it shifts a little bit, and then if I've pinned it, I get like something like this when I go towards the corner so I don't like to pin it all I just you know hold it in place with my hand this is a good time to use quilting gloves because it helps just hold the fabric in place so quilting gloves are just uh, rubberized gloves that allow you to grip the fabric quite well so, here we go. so the trickiest part about the binding is the corners because you you need to miter your corners so what I like to do is mark 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom. So if I was doing a quarter inch seam allowance, I would mark a quarter inch from the bottom. And I'm just going to sew that binding until I get to that spot. And then I'm gonna back tack. And then I'm going to take it up off the machine completely. I'm gonna remove my pin. So. I've got it sewn to a 3 eighths of an inch from the edge of the quilt. And now I'm gonna create the mitered corner. So what you do is you fold it up so that you have a 45 degree angle here and that this binding is a straight line from the quilt to your binding. So I've got a nice straight line there. I'm just gonna give it a little finger press. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fold it back down so that you have a nice straight fold along this edge of the quilt and that this part of the binding continues on straight down that quilt. I am also just going to pin this in place. So this is what it looks like. So I've got a nice straight fold here and my binding is nice and straight along this edge of the quilt. And you can see I have a nice 45 degree fold inside there. So what you do is you take it back to the machine and you're gonna start at the top edge right here and stitch down. And I also like to do a little back stitch here just to make sure everything's nice and secure. And then I just sew through all of those layers and continue on. So again, I'm getting to a corner, so I'm going to mark around 3 eighths of an inch. Now, I'm just eyeballing this, but it would be a good idea to measure. Um, and I'm back stitching. I'm removing my pin and taking it off the machine. I am going to fold so I have a nice 45 degree angle like that. And then I'm going to fold this down so I have a nice 
wear full there. I'm going to pin this in place. And so it looks like this. And then I'm going to flip it around. And sew from the top edge down. A back tack at the top. I'm going to remove that pin. It is a good idea to give it a little tension so that everything is nice and straight. So let's talk about why we use straight grain uh, binding. So straight grain binding is where you basically just cut the binding on the grain. Um, the reason we do that is, um, one, it saves fabric. If you are cutting on the bias, you use a lot more fabric. Uh, so if you are also cutting on the bias, um, your binding will be stretchy. So if you have curves on the corner of your quilt, then yeah, you definitely want to use a bias binding. But if you have a, a corners, just, you know, regular old corners, then you most likely want to use a uh, straight grain binding. It's easier to sew together. It's less fabric. So there's a lot of benefits. Now, if you have a stripe or a plaid, you might want to consider a bias binding because that cutting those on the, bind, on the bias can create some really cool design effects. Um, but for the most part, I stick, I stick with um, straight grain binding. So um, I'm going to be coming to the part where I started and you want to leave an opening. So I want to leave about this much of an opening. Now if I had a larger quilt I would probably do a little bit more. Probably be about 10-12 inches. I'm just going to sew Till I get to about here, and I'm going to back stitch. Okay, so I have a nice opening there, and then I'm going to take it to um, the ironing board and I'm going to press it this way. And then you can see if you flip your corners, you've got nice mitered corners there. So I'm going to take it to the ironing board. I'm going to press it open like this. So I'm pressing it towards the seam allowance. So I get a nice sharp crease. We also, I've got to press, but we also need to uh, join our binding pieces. So this is the method that I find works the best for me. I like it because when you join these two pieces, they join at a 45 degree angle. Um, so there is less bulk in that uh, seam just like where we joined our binding strips together so what i do is i just lay them in place where they would be on the quilt and i finger press them a quarter inch where they've got a quarter inch apart here so i just give them a little finger press okay now this is the tricky part I learned this from Suzy Quilts and I have uh, really enjoyed using this method. So you're going to open it up and you've got a crease here and you've got a crease here. And then you're going to open this one up. And you have two creases there. Now also what I like to do is I like to fold this like this so that there's some slack in my binding. So I have this one face up and this one is going to be face down and I'm going to take a pin and put it right in the center of the, the basically the plus sign that these creases have created. So there's a crease here and there's a crease here and I'm putting that right in the middle there. And then I'm going to find my plus sign on the other side and I'm going to put it in the crease there. And so now I've got my binding connected and I'm going to use the crease on this piece to line up with this crease. And 
sometimes it's a little fiddly and it doesn't help that I'm trying to do this while sitting at the sewing machine. It is actually much easier to do it at a table. But now I've got my binding pieces connected like I would have when I was sewing them together um, into the long strip. So I'm going to now take it to the machine here and I'm going to sew on the diagonal like I did before when I was connecting my strips. And I just make sure everything's lined up nicely. And get that pin out of the way now. And then to see if it worked correctly, you just pull it taut to see, and you'll notice, sorry, I took my clip off, that it is the perfect length for the quilt. And now I've got these tails that I need to trim off. So I'm going to take them to my cutting table and I'm going to trim them off with a quarter inch seam allowance like I did the rest of my binding strips. Okay, so I pressed open that seam and then I also just pressed the quilt binding and now I'm going to sew that hole closed. And as you can see, my quilt binding turned out to be the exact right length that I needed there. So I'm just gonna stitch that hole closed. So now we need to sew it to the other side. And so it needs to fold over like this. Now I often will take um, a bottle of white Elmer's glue and one of these fine line glue applicator tips and I will run some glue along here. I will fold it over and then I will iron it down and the iron will um, make the glue adhere um, and it will hold my binding in place. I, like, I think it's quite a secure way of doing it. Now you can also just clip. So I will just clip these down. So I like to sew my binding onto the front and then flip it to the back. And then there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can, Once you've got it folded and pinned or clipped in place, you can sew it in the ditch here, or you can sew it just on this edge here. Uh, you can also sew just a little bit inside here, not in the ditch. It depends on how wide your binding is. I think I'm going to stitch onto the binding, and so I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna start right here. I like, to have to line up my foot there's a little red line here um, that does an eighth of an inch um, you can, I like to do that I also like to use an edge stitch foot sometimes and it just helps me keep my stitches nice and straight and so basically I'm just sewing along through the top of the binding the bottom of the binding and the quilt Sometimes I don't clip the whole thing and I just fold it as I need to. And I just hold it nice and taut so that it's nice and straight. When you get to the corner, what you're going to do is you are going to fold it like this so that you have a 45 degree angle there. And then you are going to fold it back down so that you have a nice mitered corner. Now I am going to clip that in place. Now I've got some threads there, but that's okay. I can trim those later. And I am going to sew. Yeah, no, you're welcome to park, to park um, in the parking lot. Right Sorry. over that corner. Not really you're going to do anything to special. So I'm just going to the edge or to the corner here, and then I'm going to pivot. I'm going to take that clip out of the way. So I'm going to hit 
that fold and then I'm going to put my needle down into the quilt, put my foot back down and pivot, or I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to put my needle down, pick up my foot, pivot my quilt, and then put my foot back down. And then I can just turn the corner. Now, if you wanted to hand stitch this down, that's great. So what you would do is you would just do a whip stitch or you can even do big stitch quilting along there. But I like to do a machine. I find it stronger as well. So if your quilt's going to get a lot of use, then you might want to consider machine stitching the binding. Okay, you're just going to continue sewing around the outside of your quilt until you get to this place where you started and then you'll back stitch and then your binding will be completely sewn on. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like from the top. So you have a nice even stitch along there. And, uh, and then this is what, sorry, I got red there, but this is what it looks like from the back. So you will see the stitching on the back and you'll see it on the front, but that's what it's gonna look like.